you the right to release all of this carbon from... Does that give you the right to lecture us on climate change? I am going to lecture you on climate change because we have kept this forest alive that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon that you enjoy, that the world enjoy, that you don't pay us for, that you don't value, that you don't see a value in, that the people of Guyana has kept alive. This is the hypocrisy that exists in the world. The world in the last 50 years has lost 65% of all its biodiversity. We have kept our biodiversity. Are you valuing it? Are you ready to pay for it? When is the developed world going well, to pay for it? Or you. are you in the pockets of those who have damaged the environment? Are you and your system in the pockets of those who destroy the environment through the industrial revolution and now lecturing us? Are you in their pockets? Are you paid by them? Are you all paid right, to keep right, their Mr. message alive? Welcome to Wake Up Black. Educate and enlighten. Let's take a big picture look at what's going on here. Over the next uh, decade, two decades, it is uh, expected that there will be $150 billion worth of oil and gas extracted off your coast. It's an extraordinary figure, but think of it in practical terms. That means, according to many experts, more than 2 billion tonnes of carbon emissions will come from your seabed, from those reserves, and be released into the atmosphere. I, I don't know if you as a head of state went to the COP Let me in stop Dubai. You right there. Let me stop you right there. Do you know that Guyana has a forest forever that is the size of England and Scotland combined? A forest that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon? A forest that we have kept alive? A forest that we have kept alive. Does that give you the right? No, does no, that no, no. give you the does, right to release does, does all of this right? carbon? Does from that give you the right to, to lecture us on climate change? I am going to lecture you on climate change because we have kept this forest alive that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon that you enjoy, that the world enjoy, that you don't pay us for, that you don't value, that you don't see a value in, that the people of Guyana has kept alive. Guess what? We have the lowest deforestation rate in the world. And guess what? Even with our greatest exploration of the oil and gas resource we have now, we will still be uh, net zero. Guyana will still be net zero. With all our exploration, we will points. still be net zero. No, no, pa there's no, no... Powerful, powerful no, no, words, no, no, no. Mr. President. Hold, 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 hold. But a, a couple... I, I'm not completed as yet. I am not finished as yet. I am just not finished as yet. Because this is the hypocrisy that exists in the world. We, the world in the last 50 years, has lost 65% of all its biodiversity. We have kept our biodiversity. Are you valuing it? Are you ready to pay for it? When is the developed world going well, to pay for it? Or are you, you in the pockets? You, are you in the pockets of those who have damaged the environment? Are you in the pockets? Are you and your system in the pockets of those who destroy the environment through the industrial revolution and now lecturing us? Are you in their pockets? Are you paid by them? Are you all paid right, to keep right, their Mr. message alive? There is no hypocrisy in our position. The Center for International there, Environmental there Law no has described the oil and gas production in Guyana as turning your country from, as you rightly put it, a carbon sink into a potential, quote, carbon bomb. Now, you may say you have every right that, to exploit that, that, that is, oil that and gas. That is ridiculous. We, even with our, even with exploring and, and, and production of all our resources, we are going to still be carbon neutral. We are still going to be carbon neutral. Let me quote to you Greenpeace, who say quite simply, to avoid the worst impacts of climate change, and you know that your own country is one of the most vulnerable to climate change, because most, most of your population lives and, below and, and, sea and, level. And we have paid, guess what? Guess what? We have paid for the mitigation. We have paid for the adop uh, adaptation. We are the ones who have to find revenue. So to, no, 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 no. I want to I haven't we finished telling you what Greenpeace level. says. Yes, but let me tell Greenpeace Green say we need to keep the majority of the world's remaining fossil fuels in the ground. Yeah, Greenpeace can say You're that. We're not doing that. Greenpeace and you can say that. But we need to get resources and the developing world, we need to get resources to build the sea defenses. We need to get sea defenses to build a drainage and irrigation system. You just said that we are six feet below sea level. Who is going to pay for the infrastructure? Who is going to pay for the drainage and irrigation? Who is going to pay for the development and advancement of our country? Are you going to pay? It's not coming from anywhere. It's not coming from Greenpeace or anyone else. Look at the adoption 
budget that is required for the developing world. Where is the money coming from? Isn't there a cynicism here in Georgetown, best expressed by your vice president, who said recently, because there is this climate change imperative to decarbonize, our policy is to get as much oil out of the ground as quickly as possible. Now, he said, that's harsh for those who think that you should be environmentally sound, but that is the reality of it. Those were very honest words from your vice president. And that is what we are, honest. We are practical. So you're we're, rushing, rushing to get this oil practical. out before we, any deal is that, done that, to quote you, Dubai COP to transition away from oil and you, gas. You can say we are rushing, but we are very practical. We have this natural resource and we are going to aggressively pursue this natural resource mm. because we have to develop our country. We are committed to the development of this region. We have to create the opportunity for our people because no one is bringing that for us. You, you, no one is bringing that for us. No one is paying our agenda. Just a, no a, one is paying our a, agenda. A, a final thought about what this means inside your own country. Earlier on, I referred to the fact that 40% of the Guyanese population currently still lives in poverty. And according to USAID from a recent report, Guyana's political instability, which we also referred to, raises concerns that the country is unprepared for its newfound wealth. The tremendous influx of money opens many avenues for corruption. How do you as president ensure that that doesn't happen? So when we came into government, we said that there are a number of things that we must do. First of all, there must be an arm's length, really, arm's length relationship with the uh, oil revenue. So first, the Minister of Finance has to declare all the revenue that comes into the system. If he does not declare that, uh, within 30 days, there's a 10-year mandatory jail term for the Minister of Finance. Secondly, any revenue that is spent from oil and gas must pass through the budgetary process. So it has to go through the Parliament. It has to be debated in the Parliament. It then comes into the system. It is then audited by the Auditor General at the end of what it was intended for. And then, of course, the investment decision is made by a committee that is arms sent away, an independent committee that is arms sent away from the government. Yeah. Just a final thought on the politics. You, you, you described the tensions around the 2020 election. It was hotly disputed. I think it's fair to say that there's a clear sort of ethnic element to the politics of Guyana. Your party is predominantly Indo-Guyanese. No, the opposition... We're, we're, we're the only national party. Well, that's what you say. But we're the only, nonetheless... But when you go on the ground, and I invite you to our Congress, you will see the representation of party. We but are I, the I only national I refer to the opposition party. leader, Aubrey Norton, from the opposition well, national well, now Congress. You're saying, so, so now you're saying that in the words of the opposition leader. No, I, I want to pursue the words he recently yeah. said, where he said that given everything that your government is doing with the oil money, to quote him, a one-party state is emerging in Guyana. There are fears that the money you have access to is entrenching your political supremacy. Well, well first of all, let me uh, address an issue. You have to give me a few moments. The ethnic division of this country was instigated by external forces. You are aware of this. It was instigated by external forces. We have to accept that. This is part of your legacy. Uh, part of your legacy is this, that you divided the people. We have been working aggressively on bringing back the people together. My agenda is a one Guyana agenda, and I want to see all of Guyana prosper, and prosperity comes to every single home. So our political party is a national political party, and to win the elections, you have to win more than 50% of the vote. There is no one ethnic group that is 50% in this country. If you look at the ethnic breakdown of the country, for a political party to win the elections, and we are one political party, we have to win from all ethnic uh, groups. We have to win from all segments. So we are pursuing a political strategy that brings our people together, that unifies our people, and that works towards bringing prosperity to every single home. That is a strategy that we are pursuing. And that is the only strategy we are interested in.